So in this video, I'm going to work through a problem involving a hinge or a pivot. And uh, at the end, part B, I'm going to tackle that in two different ways. Uh, one way looking at components of forces and the other using a triangle of forces, uh, which I know some people prefer using. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's read through the problem. We've got a uniform plank AB of mass 25 kilos is pivoted at A and held at an angle of 30 degrees to the vertical by a force F applied at B perpendicular to AB. So part A, find F. So first of all, we can say that because the plank is uniform, the weight must act through the center of the rod. And so that would be 25 G. Now, we don't know the length of the rod, so what we'll do is we'll call that length L metres and that length L metres. OK, so for part A, um, now, the thing is that the rod is in contact with the pivot at point A. Now, we don't know the reaction force, so what we'll do is we'll split that up into Ry and Rx. So we'll give it a vertical and a horizontal component. But to work out F, um, you might be instinctively going, well, let's resolve forces. That's what we usually do first. But um, the problem here is that in resolving forces, either vertically or horizontally, there are two unknowns. Uh, we don't know the components of F, and we don't know Rx and Ry. So that doesn't make for a good starting point. So we fall back on taking moments, and I'm going to take moments about point A. So that allows me to ignore Rx and Ry. So we are L metres away, so I'm going to have to split the weight up into its components. Now, um, this angle being 30 means that that angle is 60 degrees, so that angle is 60 degrees. So this side will be 25g cosine 60. We're L metres away, and it's going around in a clockwise motion. So take away L times 25g cosine 60. Then we are 2L away from the F force, which is going around anti-clockwise. So plus 2L times F is equal to 0. So, F, if we divide through by L, move the 25G cosine 60 over the other side, divide through by 2, will be 25 halves G cosine of 60. So 25 divided by 2 times by 9.8 times by cosine of 60 is 245 and 4, so 61.25 newtons. So that is F. OK, so part B. So this is the bit where I'm going to do it in two, part, two ways. So first way, I'm going to go about it using uh, resolving forces. OK, so let's do that. So let's resolve vertically first. Now we have Ry. Take away the 25G. And then we need the vertical component of F. So let's um, split that up, shall we? So let's just pop that there. OK, so what is this angle going to be? Now, um, that angle there if you think about the big right angle triangle that you have there, that's going to be 30. So that means that angle is going to have to be 60. So this is F sine 60, and this is F cosine 60. So if I'm resolving vertically, then I need to add on F cosine 60, so 61.25 cosine 60, and that's going to be equal to 0. So Ry, 
um, is going to be 25 times 9.8 take away 61.25 times cosine of 60. And we get uh, 214.375 newtons. So that is the vertical component of the reaction force at the pivot. Now, if I resolve horizontally, I'm going to take to the right as positive. We have Rx. We've got the uh, horizontal component of F, which is F sine 60. So take away F, 61.25 sine of 60 is equal to 0. So 61.25 times sine of 60 is 53 point... Actually, let's do it that way. So times by... Okay, so sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. Uh, I'm just trying to kind of make this easier for myself to write in. So 61.25 is 255, 245 over 4. Um, so, sorry. 245 over 4 times by sine of 60. So root 3 over 2. So let's write that as 245 root 3 over 8. OK, so that is the normal reaction force, uh, the, sorry, the horizontal component of the normal reaction force at the pivot. OK, find the magnitude of the reaction force at the hinge and the direction in which it is applied. So if we call it R, then the magnitude of R will be equal to uh, the uh, square root of that squared plus that squared. So using Pythagoras. So 214.375 squared plus 245 root 3 over 8 squared. OK, so square root of 214.375 squared plus 245 root 3 over 8 squared, and that gets us 220.840015.6, so 221 newtons to three significant figures. Okay, so that is the magnitude of the reaction force. Now, the direction in which it is applied, well, it's being applied at an angle, like so, where this is your angle theta. The Rx is 245 root 3 over 8. And Ry, that is 214.375. So the angle is the arctan of 214.375 divided by 245 root 3 over 8. So inverse tan of 214.375 over 245 root 3 over 8. And that's 76. 0.1 degrees to 3 sig fig to the horizontal. Okay? And so that is the magnitude and the direction in which it is applied. So I'm just going to take note of that. So we had uh, 221 newtons and the angle is 76.1 degrees. Okay? So that's one way of doing part B. And personally, that's probably the way that my brain would think about solving the problem. However, there is an alternative. Now, the alternative is using what's referred to as a triangle of forces. So, the reason why it's called a triangle of forces is because there are precisely three forces 
um, being applied to the rod here, three forces that we're working with. We have R, the reaction force at the hinge, we have the weight, 25G, and we've got F. Okay, so we've got three forces. And the idea is, can you draw those three forces uh, to make up a triangle? Okay, now your normal reaction force is going to be shooting off at some angle, something like that. Okay, so the idea then would be, okay, well, if I moved that one um, maybe to join there, so you've got your F, like so, and then you've got the 25G, and then you've got R, okay, you've then got a triangle of forces. Okay, now we've worked out F, that's 61.25. Now, the key bit here is making sure you get that angle right. Okay, now that angle um, in connection with um, those two forces, so vertical force and that one, so if you've got that force coming down, if that's 60 degrees, that has to be 60 degrees. So this is 60 degrees here, okay? Then what we can do is we can employ the cosine rule in order to work out the length of R. So R squared, or I could write the length of R squared, so I'll just leave it like that. So R squared is equal to 25G squared, plus 61.25 squared, take away 2 times 25g times 61.25 times cosine of your angle, so 25 times 9.8, square that, and then plus 61.25 squared, then take away 2 times 25 times 9.8 times 61.25 times by cosine of 60 gets us um, 4, so squared is 48770.3125. So R is the square root of that, which is 220.840015. Okay, and that is our 221 to 3 sig fig. Okay, and that, that was done pretty quickly. Um, so then, what's the angle that it makes? So we've now got that. So really, uh, what we want is this angle, and then we can take it away from uh, 90 degrees to work out that angle there. So now that I've got R, I can use now the sine rule, can't I? So let's call this alpha. So sine of alpha divided by 61.25 is going to be equal to sine of 60 divided by our 220.84, etc. Okay, so sine of 60 divided by the 220.84, etc. And then times that by 61.25, and then inverse sine of that gets me 13.897, etc. degrees. So then I need to subtract that. So theta is 90, take away 13.897, etc. degrees. And we get 76.1 degrees to 3 sig fig, which was the angle I had before. Okay, so you can use the triangle of forces here, and it works in the unique scenario when you have three forces. Um, if you don't have three forces, then 
we can't really utilize it. Um, so I would probably say in the long run, the triangular forces method isn't one that my, I would immediately go to because um, I'm so used to resolving uh, vertically and horizontally um, and working with the problem that way. Ultimately, it is up to you. You're perfectly at liberty to use the triangular forces to solve a problem like this.